In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people in the North. I say that for all my guests, but I mean once again today. It's Adam Caton Holland. That had a little that had a little rhythm to it. A little mean it today. Yeah, like a chorus is gonna join in and sort of test the, mm. the Yeah, exactly. Mm, today. Did you grow up in church? Were you a no, church boy? No, 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 no. No, no church for you at all. Uh-uh. Parents of conflicting religions. Oh. And uh, Let me guess, Judaism and Buddhism. <laughs> yeah. Taoism and whatever's going on in Palestine. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what were the conflicting just religions? Just Christian, Jewish, hippies. So like neither yeah. one won. We just didn't do anything. No so church. So you did no church. Now how about holidays? Hanukkah, Christmas. It was great. My dad was the Jew. So shitty, we're shitty Jews. Yeah, you're bad supposed Jews. to come from the mom's right. side anyway. Dad was the Jew, which meant he had to do Hanukkah. So like he would literally steal a couple Christmas gifts uh, for my mom's collection, maybe a bag of gelt on day three, mm. and then it would just peter out. We never got through all really? eight days. Yeah, bag we'd go of... to we'd go to better Jews' houses for Passover and oh, Rosh Hashanah. The better, the and better stuff. Jews. My dad knew a collection of better Jews around the city, and so we'd go have those experiences. Did he have a, a map of better Jews? <laughs> you don't tell Gentiles about the map. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Trust me, we get a hold of that thing. It's all over. Forget about it. The guilt thing is very funny because Jews have a lot of guilt. So I guess that is really close to home, huh? I guess so. I honestly have never even thought about that. You never that. thought about that. No, you guys are no. littered with it. You don't seem to have it, though. Because I'm not a good Jew. Right, you're a bad boy Jew. I'm a bad boy Jew. Yeah, but dad, I did dad. go to Israel for free on a birthright trip because I know a deal when I see one. Yeah, God bless. Yeah. Put this down a little bit so we can see your little face. Look My at your little beautiful, face. Well, you have a beautiful fucking face. Thanks, man. Since I've known you, you've always been a handsome, sweet, smart, funny, intelligent, wonderful, kind. Uh, caring human being. You left Los Angeles many years ago. We've known each other for over a decade. You went back to Denver, Colorado, uh, the mecca uh, of, uh, of... I can't wait to hear you finish this. Well, I was trying to figure out what was that. It's the, it's the mecca of... Um, you know, fool's gold and dream gold. catchers the and, good old and West. skulls. The good old West. The good old West. Yeah. You know, and it still remains that to a degree, although, you know, we have family in Denver. We go back... It's a lot different than it used to be. Denver's exploded, man. When I was a kid, it was like my friends and I wanted to get out of that town. It felt yeah. like a cow town. You had to leave that city to go do anything real. Not anymore. And then my friends and I would gradually come back from college, and we're just like, I'm thinking about buying a house here. <laughs> like, yeah, because it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's really exploded, and now it's a pretty dynamic city. Um, so I, I'm digging it, man. What part of Denver were you from? There's this neighborhood called Park Hill. Yeah. Chauncey Billups is yeah, from Park Hill. We know it. He's got the, Did you ever know Soder as a young lad? No, Soder and I never crossed paths. But he's he was, from Aurora, Colorado, Aurora. I know he's which not is trash. Yeah. <laughs> but my wife is from Aurora, Colorado as well, which is trash, and she yeah. knows it. And so I texted Soder when I was going to my wife's uh, 20th high school reunion, and he she went to a rival school as him. And I was like, check it out, I'm at Overland High School reunion. He's like, I can smell it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. It does have a little stank on it. I think there's an Aurora in every. City, of course, Wayne's World. Totally, that's the most famous. Aurora. Yeah, that's why they jokingly did Aurora, Illinois, and I think I can't remember the reasoning for why he did that. I remember hearing like different anecdotal. He chose it because uh, maybe like one of the co somebody that helped co write was a Chicago guy. You know, there's a lot of Chicago improv yeah, it's comedy all Second from City that stuff. Yeah, from that era. That but, li that movie is one of my favorites to this day. Oh, still, still the rules. best. Looms it's large. unbelievable. It and it works still. It's still t some of those you watch, especially Mike Myers films. You're like. Didn't age well, but Wayne's yeah, but World has. It's not offensive. It's like, dude, it rules. I love that movie. It's got, um, it's got this very uh, simple. It's such a simple format that it didn't let itself get in the way. In fact, they make fun of. They kind of are self aware. They make fun of when things get in their own way and they ruin the 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 juice of something. That's how they when they sell to arcade, you know, to Noah's Arcade. Totally, totally. And it's I remember really at, cool. at the end of it, they have like four different like, let's end it this way. Let's do the Scooby Doo. Mm -hmm. and, and that went to my twelve year old brain. I was like, you can break the fourth wall. Yeah, like that. that I that, love that. I, I thought I, that was so cool. They just didn't give a shit. Nope. And kind of they broke a lot of rules in 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 it in and of itself anyway because it's. It's kind of a wonky film. They talk to the camera multiple times. You can tell a lot of stuff in there was like not supposed to be in there initially. Mm -hmm. That's what I think made comedies great when we were kids. We're around the same age. I'm 43. 
Wow. Yeah. You old, old How old bitch. are you? No, I'm 40. Okay. Yeah. Damn. But it is funny that it's just like all those movies when we were kids, the comedies of the world, I think they were just a little bit more um, uh, jagged and rough, and they weren't as complete. I bet you they weren't network noted to death. I bet you there wasn't yeah. a team as big on top of well, it. Well, nobody cared. I think back then they were like, just put it out. Like, this thing it's might do cheap. well. It's cheap. And SNL yeah. was probably a reliable. Like, they usually tend to make their money back. Just let them do their thing. Yeah. I guarantee that was what was going on. Well, and also Mike got a lot of, he, he got a lot of love because he was so creative. I think it's like, you know, I think the cr- character creation had won for him so much that people knew that, well, this was going to work as well. And... You know, it's interesting. I talked about this literally yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, did you know Shrek? Did you ever see the tapes of Farley? No, but I heard about that. It's on the internet now. We found them one time. Uh, I don't even know where they are, what website they're on. They're on YouTube. Yeah, but they get ripped down. Like, every week, they Hmm. rip them down. But there's, you know, you can see some of this stuff of Shrek. You don't have to... I think I've seen clips of it just on... You know, that's how I'd get anything in a in a 12-second Instagram yeah. dose. And I'm like, I'm cognizant of it. <laughs> I know what's going on. But it was wild that Farley used his own voice. And then I guess, you know, after, after his passing, they had Mike Myers came in afterwards and threw in the Scottish thing. You know what's crazy? Well, the Scottish thing really sold it. It was great. That's Not like wild. Farley wouldn't knock it out of the park, but I... Just like you, I mean, Tommy Boy Ugh, like was, the best. was just the pivotal. Best. But I often think now, what roles would Chris Farley be getting? Mm. Like with good, like Paul Thomas Anderson getting a hold of him. Oh, that's or like Wes Anderson, just aging old Chris Farley. Can you imagine the sort of dramatic turns? It'd be he would cool get? to see like the Coen Brothers do like a uh, uh, something dark and solo with him. You know, totally. like a, a man out west going to Denver looking for gold. Oh man, Farley on that on a gold rush. Let me write that script. You're like <laughs> Adam, he's dead. No, let me write the script. <laughs> Now that he's dead, I want to write it. <laughs> um, before I jumped into too many, I, I'll digress a thousand times. Me but too. What me I too. do want to say is, since I've known you, you've always been beyond a good dude, but also a great comedian. And you have a special out that's out right now on YouTube. Same production company that I used for mine that many of our friends and family have used, 800 Pound, who put out some really good sauce, some Aguda Sauce. Very nice. Uh, and it's out right now. Link will be in the description below. Please go watch the brand new special. Of course, it's called Map of the Jews. Map that's of the Good not, Jews. Uh, that's that's the hidden track if you play it backwards. <laughs> map if of you, Denver's if, Good yeah. Jews. The map of Denver's Good Jews. If you yeah. spin it backwards. <laughs> now, 1717 Milwaukee Street. Yeah. 4100 Locust. Get him. What's the name of the new special? <laughs> it's called Adam? Wallpaper. Wallpaper yes. is the name of the new special out on YouTube. Available right now. Please go watch it. You're the opposite of Wallpaper. Wallpaper is kind of stagnant. That's not you. I stand out, I like to think, but this is, I got two kids now. This yeah. is my fatherhood effort. Love and it. there's a whole joke about becoming the wallpaper of your family. And like, yeah, I was in first place my whole life, and now I'm in fourth place. And it's mm. a real big ding to your <laughs> psyche and ego. So wallpaper references that. You're first place in our heart. Thank you. You're number my... one in my little soul. I, I mean, I don't like your wife or your kids more than I like you. You haven't even met the yeah, kids. That's what I'm talking about. I don't right. want to meet those people. I think they could win you over. I mean, I'm I suck. They're pretty cool. Uh, my dad used to always say, growing up, he would say he's the LVP. I'm the LVP of this family. And the I, LVP. LVP. Yeah. And we'd go, "You're a fucking drama queen, Dad. That's what yeah, you are." Yeah. And then you're a dad, and you're like, "Oh, I so, I so get it. I'm the LVP of my family. It's yeah, just, it's just it. weird how it happens. You so made quick. humans to take your place. It's a strange self-sacrifice. It's cool. You learn a lot. I mean, I and I also like was really cognizant. I didn't want this to be a hacky kids say the darndest thing. I don't want to become that fucker. But I feel like every comic. You get one. You get one fatherhood sure. special, and this is that for me. So yeah, I'm pretty proud. Of I, it. I think it's not a, I, like also. I don't believe in that word, by the way. Hack. What? I think it's a. Oh. I think it's a made up word. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> Here's why I don't believe it. I think it's, it's comedy such a subjective nightmare that uh, what one person thinks is is hacky or whatever can somehow be spun into some sort of creative gold for somebody else. I don't know. There's something about it that to That's me is That's such like, a sophisticated view of it, and I've never even thought that. Well, I, it's only because other people's shit. There's tons of comics I don't like their shit. There's people that don't like right, my shit, right. but they still respect you, maybe, because of your work and your effort. So if somebody goes, oh, yeah, that guy or that girl is hacky, I'm like, no, that's just not what you like in comedy. It's like, it's like this. I don't like Corvettes, okay? I fucking loathe Corvettes. I think that I cannot stand that car. I could go on about why I don't like it. I'm a car guy. But for guys that like it, to me, they're like, what are you even talking about? Mm -hmm. It's the greatest car ever built. (laughs) Right. So I just step back from things like that and go, 
as I've gotten older, I'm like, yeah, right. That's not made for me anyway. What the fuck? Why would it, why would I like it? I really love that. And I think like as I've gotten older, like with comedy in comedy, it's of all the art forms, so to speak. People just say it's comedy, and and we're all the same. Just right. bl- and it's right. it's not, I'm using the music analogy. There's genres. Some people play arena cock rock. I'm not into it. Like, <laughs> and and don't get mad at the guy who's selling out the arena with no. his cock rock. Yeah, because you're a little indie rocker, dude. You play a different type of music. And also, the indie rocker doesn't want to be the cock rock. Exactly. So You'd why be try to overly? You'd be yes, miserable you would be so, so mad. Just whenever you get frustrated in comedy, I'm like, that's not my genre. I don't even do that thing. Yeah, it's and like, and who cares? Right. And enjoy the ride. That's why I talked about Joe Coy the other day about everyone like throwing these darts at that guy hosting the show. And I didn't watch it because I just don't give a shit about those things. But I bet you, if I watched it, I bet you it wasn't that bad. It's just because his brand of humor didn't match with whatever they had going on. Right. And that's the end of it. It's like this, there's this weird ideology of like, there's a perfect rhythm to this thing. It's like, not really. You're putting a guy up there in front of privileged, successful people. With no senses of humor Well, so what the fuck do you think is going to happen? You were mad when Gervais fucking was rude to you. Then you're mad when the sweetheart, Joe Coy's the, like the fucking sweetheart gets up there and is like, hey, here's some kind of, you know, uh, thrown together jokes that we did and blah, blah, blah. How, what's hateable? I don't know. Anyway, I just think it's, uh, we're entering an era where I think you can have your own specific taste yep. and love what you love. But when we bash on the shit that's like different than us, it's almost like a waste of our time because it wasn't for us in the first place. And comedy fans are getting more knowledgeable about like the genre that they prefer with that's podcasts totally right. and right. just like they see people guesting on this show. Oh, I like him. I like might like him. It's just like a Spotify suggestion at this. The best point. part is you get to pick and choose. Totally, you know? totally. And and I've said this before. And McCone and I were talking before the show. You are, and people may not know this, but you are the next Matt Rife. You're next in line. <laughs> as far as hot guy, arena hot guy goes, I know Matt how Rife, to ask Adam people, Holland. what do you do? <laughs> are you together? And that's why I got into comedy is because I don't like jokes, but I want to know people's relationship to each other in various groups. Yes. I'm just fascinated by people and what they yes. do and, and whether they're together. That's right. And so, like, this is the quickest way to learn that. You're going to be next. I've said this I'm a to journalist. Matt. I'm a Matt, journalist is what I am. And I, I said, am. Matt, move over. Mm-hmm. ACH is next, baby. 43-year-old dad time. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Take your shirt off, Adam. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. What do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm serious. I just And then there's no riff, and I just write it down like I'm gathering facts. Yeah. <laughs> it would be great for you to do a dad show of just crowd work with dads with their kids. Just having just one-on-one conversations. Totally. Not even, yeah, it's not even it, funny. There's, maybe there's a laugh in the hour. No, but one it's usually two. just a conversation. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's very like because you get into the throes of uh, of uh, Miss Rachel. I'm sure that's a piece of your Mrs. Rachel. Is that her? What's her name? I don't know. What my buddy. About. My buddy was just telling me about with his kids. Miss Rachel. Look up Miss Rachel. Oh, is it's this like, like a an kid? instructional. Mm. Yeah, and a mm. friend was like, I think that's her. Yeah, yeah. This... Similar to comedy, you fall into your own genre. Of right, kid, your genre of, kid of parenthood. Right. I'm a blippy guy. I'm a bluey blippy. guy. Blippy. Yeah. Okay. Blippy's insane. I've heard dude. these. But look at this girl, Miss Rachel. She she's got this kind of like, hi everybody, and she's sw- and jungle it. Yeah. So go, but get out of here. And you can see she's got like eight million followers. And my buddy was like. A friend of a friend was like, dude, have you shown your fucking kid, Miss yeah, Rachel? Yeah, because yeah. I guess he was like, you know, had a hard time with some stuff. And then he was like, I, I bet you this this will help. Oh, really? And my friend was like, get the fuck out of here. Dude, we try, we, we're, we're going to like real doctors to figure some of this shit out. And then, of course, they let him watch a little bit of Miss Rachel. And the kid's like fucking all in. And he's like, it's funny that these new tricks of the Internet have worked. When we were kids... There were no tricks. Like exactly. I see Miss Rachel, and I'm like, production value too low. YouTube, no, don't believe it. But then you become a parent, and you're just like, I read a meme today that was very convincing, and I utilized it, and it worked. Mm-hmm. Like they have all these little <laughs> yeah. self help tips yeah, in our dude. pocket. Like it's real. Don't now. ask your kid how his day was. Ask him one thing he did today. Oh right. You know what I mean? That's right. they don't want to talk about school. They're just like mums the words. So you're like. What what's something that you did in class, and usually you can get an answer out of them. For what's that. the fear though? What is do you have the fear of like the internet has uh, circulated I'm, too deep in your kids' lives now? I, on my podcast, my friends Ben and Andrew, who you know, make fun oh, yeah. of me because I'm just like so old, dude. I still get a physical newspaper. I carry a check in my wallet. You get the Denver like Post in the morning. 
I do, well, when they fucking decide to deliver it. I was going to say, don't they not deliver that anymore? These guys, these assholes. <laughs> then they have the audacity to ask for a Christmas tip with just an envelope in the paper. Like, I'm, you, seriously. But you do it anyway, don't you? No. Hit your success rate more than 30% a week, and we'll talk tip <laughs> at the end of the year, dude. I like this, dude. Dude, you. in your truck. Do you ever tip the mailman, the mail person? I do. I tip the mail person, and my favorite... Well, I got these boys that are five and two, so they love the compost truck. They love the recycling truck. Yeah. So this Christmas, throw a 20 in a red envelope, have the boys walk it out to the truck. And those dudes love me now. Hell like yeah. They really like They're me. picking up your shit every week now. Leaf season, I got extra compost bags around. <laughs> They'll pick up mine, They're but I see, my neighbors, I see yeah. my neighbors sitting there on the fucking stoop still. Why do you pick up your bags? Well, the little Christmas trick <laughs> by the best Jew on the block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're, even in the truck, they're like, yeah, the Jew's okay, man. He gave us a tip. <laughs> Jew gave us money. Jew gave us money. Typical. We ought to pick up his shit. He's nice. He's all right. He's not bad. His dad's a Jew. They get into a full diatribe. They understand, like, you know, his mom is not a Jew. He's one of the good Jew. ones. Yeah. See on the map? They've got the map. <laughs> they how did it. you guys get the fucking that's map? How, that's, who we, that's our route. That's how we plan our the route. The mayor gave it to us. Yeah, yeah. This is the Jew map, boys. <laughs> Take it with you on your routes. <laughs> we talked about tipping our... Uh, this is what's weird about our neighborhood, and this might be just Los Angeles as a whole. Mm -hmm. But, like, our male... I say male person because it was a guy for a while, then it was a lady, then it was another guy, then it's been a lady, but now she doesn't do our house. She does, like... The other block. It's, it's the weirdest shit. I'd same in my neighborhood. And they always change. And yeah, they're they always different all the time. times of so day. So I don't know who it is. Now. Totally. And also my guy, I don't want to say her name, but you motherfucker, dude. I, I, I tried to give him a piece of mail as he was walking away from the doorstep. And he's like, no. I was like, no, 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 dude. I just, because I ran out after him. Oh, you mean like to mail out? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was like, no, no, I've already left the premises. Are and you I, serious? I swear to God. And I was like, what does that mean? And he showed me, you know, they have a little digital. I don't even know what to call it. Whatever. Like, it looks like a little... You know what it looks like? A uh, credit card scanner. You know, it's like this big. It's like a little... And he showed me, and it has um, the address of which the home he's supposed to be on. So I guess when he passes the house, he clicks something that says, like, he's Probably no longer there. to make sure there. he hit that house. Yeah. But also, I think it's a time thing. He's like, no, 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 I'm on the... I have to be at the next house. By now. And That's like, like Jeff Bezos' Amazon uh, shit. I know. They're I really don't now. think the USPS is working that efficient dark room light swinging cigarette smoke gun to the mail person like why'd you spend so much time at uh, 5216 last week what was going on we had a lunatic mail man yeah. and he uh, it was a man and he there's a house across the street nicest dog ever neighborhood kids pet it through the fence lacy and this dude was unwell hmm. and he and we had all had like numerous incidents with him where he was unwell and he went into their yard one day and lacy like sniffed him and he just maced her eyes what and fucked up our neighbor's dog. Whoa, dude. And they're like trying to, like it blinded one eye. The dog's been fucked up ever since. And they're Whoa. trying to like sue the USPS. It's going nowhere. But And then the guy was gone. They kicked him off. But like, they'll let anybody, mailmen are not well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they are, look, some of them uh, tend to be, um, it's, uh, when I think about it again, if I'm being a sweetheart today, a bummer gig. It's a, it's bummer a bummer gig. gig. It's a bummer gig, man. I don't want to do it. No. Did you ever read, was it Post Office by Bukowski? No. It's You should read it. This it's LA. Great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's just depraved Bukowski being a mailman, and it's real, yeah. and it's all the characters that work at a post office in the 60s in LA. It's pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a great that's read. That's when it was probably, yeah, that's when they're still doing their partying at the post office. Now you go there, it's a very, it's just a, it's a, it's a bum gig. It's a bum gig to have to throw people's shit in their box. But also, if you're going to do it in a place like this, it is cake there's no bad weather you're ever having to like go through no shit yeah, you're this not is a midwest easy. post office Fuck yeah, yeah you yeah, don't yeah. live in you don't live in the throes of shit fart minnesota where this kid's from which is the FedEx worst this kid did you FedEx. were fedex yeah, he FedEx. oh wow when i was trained they would just like kick packages yeah <laughs> i mean they're supposed to did you make bank no no no, no you huh. don't make any money because you technically don't work for fedex you work for an independent yeah you work for like a third party yeah. Yeah, you don't work for you don't work for them. <sighs> that settles it. I'm good. Yeah. I'm not pivoting. That's I'm right. Glad I You're came gonna on stay this in podcast. comedy. I'm staying in comedy. I'm not gonna be in That's fucked up. We tried, dude. We did try to convince you. We did say before the show, could we sucker you into becoming a delivery driver? That was I, I, why that eight minute segment was about uh the oh, yeah. It's like an army recruitment thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adam, you wanna come on whiskey ginger? You're like, Have you thought about your future, Adam? You're sponsored by After USPS. comedy. Now I've only been privileged enough to do high planes once. Um, we can't afford you anymore. Well, but also schedule. This is the problem with what happens when we get a little bit of like time on the road is now like every year 
you've got a tour. It's like oh, every right, year right. they're like, get on the road. And totally. then you're like, do I have time to do any, like a festival or fit this in? And it's like, no, what are you talking about? We need you in every city possible. Sure, sure, sure. It does get a little overwhelming. And then also, that was the other thing about coming to Denver, which I love so much, is I they don't want you to burn the market. Right. It's which such a good sucks. comedy market, though. It's the best. And yeah. that's why you want to like save it. If yeah. it was a... If it was in a different city, I probably would double down and not care. Right. But that's such a comedy market that it stinks. It bums me out. I get, I, yeah, I get bummed about it. It's all right, man. No worries. We'd love yeah. having you the time you can. If, but High Plains rule. Comedy Festival, by the way, uh, how long has it been going on right now? It just hit 10 years. It's wild, It's dude. a festival I run. It's like a very indie comedy festival. But I, I people have described it as the best indie comedy festival in the U.S., and I proudly accept that title. I would say it's better than uh, non. In, it's better than any corporates. I mean, what the fuck? It, are it's the, very just love. The of the corporates game. don't even exist anymore. I JFL know. and South by and all that's a Moon Tower. Moon even. Tower, yeah. Well, they're so thick. Right. It's you know that's just like a who's who of everything. It's got every big name, every big theater show. This is a smaller mom and pop, but it's very much love of the game. The old cliche, summer camp of comedy. So it's, it's just rad. comics that I can just be like, hey, can I underpay you to come to Denver and party for a weekend? And my friends are generally like, yeah, that sounds Absolutely. great. Absolutely. And it really is a ball. And there's really great shows. I did, one of my favorite shows I did was um, at a bookstore that, uh, and you had to get, I think you were given, like given a few topics and you had to construct um, fan fiction surrounded by. Oh yeah, I remember that show. Yeah, Competitive yeah, yeah. erotic fan really fiction. It was really cool. Erotic that, fan fiction. That was yeah. a fun one. Yeah. You had to go write. It, speed write. Yeah, you had to speed write. Yeah. You had to go backstage and you had maybe 20 minutes or something like that to just like barf out a great love erotic fan <laughs> yeah. fiction story. Totally, totally. And I think mine was about, God, I wish I could remember, but I, I want to say it was, um, it was erotic fan fiction of, of, with Lois Lane. I think it was... It's hot. I think it was. I I've think it was like the first time that they hook up or something like that. Brian Cook used to run that show. He writes, yeah, for, Brian he Cook. writes for Brian Kimmel Cook. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, I did like Friday Night Lights one time, which got real hot. Yeah. I did Lord of the Rings, which got super gay and That's steamy. very gay. Very fast. Yeah, very yeah, gay. That That is basically a gay novel to begin with, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It just it needed a little push <laughs> off the cliff of Mordor, and I was ready to just shove it all so the way full in. full orgy at some dude, point? so great. Yeah, yeah, dicks and mouths. Like, it was great. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, it's a great festival. It's very fun, and I uh, I do, and I have that affinity for Denver too. So it's hard to. Well, it's, it's I'm gonna pest hard. you about it because I've gotten to the point with it because I don't like running a festival, booking friends. Like I'm a comic, I don't want to be a producer. But it's now I'll just hit up people and they'll be like, "Can I connect you with my agent?" And I go, "No." Nah. No, I wouldn't. I do, that's, I wanna, well, that's a waste of both of our time. Right, exactly. I got to have some call with some asshole who's like, so what's this and what's that? And I'm like, it's the m amount I told your client, and we have nothing, and that's what it is. Yeah. So they said, yes, what are we even doing this call for? So I've now I've gotten to that point, which is nice. The, when I started it, I had to be like, can you please come? And now people are like, I'd love to come. And yeah, let's just do it off the books. Well, yeah, right. because you can't. You, once, you get the, uh, once you get the agents and all that shit involved, it becomes this. It, everything gets convoluted. It, 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 it totally dilutes what originally was these festivals or what they were made for in the old school days of like even like the small LA festivals that they used to run that have kind of like come and Riot gone and come and, and gone. Like yeah. That. It's like even those get so rich with the business, which is good. But then at the same time you're like, well, it's not even the thing anymore. Well for <laughs> me it was really like I started out in Denver and all the only everything I ever got was just for performing with people, befriending them and then sort of being like, hey, do you mind if you vouch for me on this or that? So I opened for Tig Notaro one time. She did a festival. I asked her, could I be on it? She said, you're on. And then I went and did it. And then somebody at Bridgetown Comedy Festival saw me. Yeah. Flew out to Portland, did that. Got a manager off of that and like opened all these doors. So I always wanted to have that in Denver, just like shine the spotlight there. Because it's always been a good scene of producing people all the time. Big time. And so I just wanted that once a year, national communities to come and Denver to shine. And it's really turned into that. No, it's, it truly is. And I don't think that happens anymore. Not to harp too much on the... LA com or the the comedy uh, festival market but I think comedy fans that listen to the show don't know but that used to be like such a great way to kind of like make your way through the system <clears throat> I don't know if that's a thing anymore as much as it used to be because now there's so much noise get your views get your yeah, videos so much up. fucking noise but for me coming up especially as someone who wasn't in New York or LA it was a big thing to yeah. try to get seen that way well that's so, how like, you usually poke through to something else 100% that's how I heard guys that would come from like you know, it'd be like, oh, this guy's coming out of Nashville. Back before Nashville was even remotely what it is today. Or for like sure, for Chicago sure. guy or Atlanta kids or like, you know. Austin before Austin, Austin was the Yeah, mega, right, Boston yeah. and Austin. Yeah, both of these places were like, if you could get out of there to go here to either get to New York or L.A. or where else where they can pop, and then you get successful enough, you move back, you kind of were like this, uh, it was like this perfect story when I heard that you had you were moving back home because I was like, oh, man, that's like a, 
a positive go I gotta go back home. Well, you it, know what's funny? It wasn't like a I gotta tuck my tail. I'm glad like, you hear you say yeah. that. I mean, we, my friends and I came out here to film a show. Like we got a TV show mm -hmm. called Those Who Can't, and we moved out here to make it. And we got three seasons. To me, that was always the dream. Like I didn't want to move to LA being like, I hope I get something. Yeah. It was like we came here to do a job and we did three you seasons. Did job. And I never thought about moving. We would come here, I'd write the show. Uh, make the show and then spend, go back to Denver. I, don't, yeah. I would rent places out here for half the year and go back. And so I never like left really in my head. I was just coming out here to do a job. Right. And I want to come back out here and do many more jobs. But that's sort of, we got spoiled. That was the model. The first thing I ever did was my thing. And now I only want to do my things. No, but so, that's, you should if that's you know, what you want. Like you don't, you shouldn't be a part of something else if it's not what you love anyway. Yeah, I don't think I'm the best actor ever. I think like I like writing shit. I like I like creating the whole world. And so, what do you, are doing. you want to create stuff that you're not in as well, or no? Both. I mean, I'll give myself a role, but I don't want to like carry the damn thing. I just well, I just wrote a movie that they're making, and I I'm not the guy, <laughs> but I'll have a little part in it. What's that? What is it? I wrote this book and uh, about it's like a, this is a p sad pivot, but I wrote a book about losing my sister to suicide. Yeah, and I adapted that into a movie. Oh, that's rad! And we're making it. Wow. Yeah, I'm really pumped about it, dude. Yeah, you sent me that book. I have that book. We yeah. didn't, we shouldn't have talked. We shouldn't talk about this. No, this is it's a whole sad. different. No, thing. No, let's talk about it. it. No, I mean, I really didn't mean to take it there, but yeah, we were you talking did, about... and yeah, you did. You I... were waiting the whole fucking show uh... to go. I'm bringing up suicide at some point on you this podcast. You brought up the post office shit. You're right. You know what happens with post office? I know post suicide. office suicide every time or mass murder. Either way, exactly. There's, There's only two, two ways out of this. <laughs> intertwined. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, that is. Uh, it, it is. Um, uh, the point I was trying heart, to make was heavy, not this sad point, but was that, yeah. that I like writing the thing, creating the thing, being in charge. I yeah. really like that part. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I hope that movie gets made, and your sister would be played by? No, I haven't cast anybody yet, Who but would if be you want to Me? do it. Can I be your sister? Yeah. Do I look anything like what she looked like? No. No, not at all. Well, was a beautiful redheaded woman? No, but I mean, this is Hollywood, baby. Anything. <laughs> yeah, can yeah, happen. that's right, dude. <laughs> Fifteen minutes in a room at Warner Brothers can We've change the it down world. To Santino and Amy Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Jessica Chastain, uh, Isla Fisher, uh, Amy Adams, and uh, give me one more redhead. Give me one more redhead. Jessica Rabbit. Yeah, oh yeah, what a She'd win, babe. just to work with her. Nicole Kidman is redhead, kinda? Yeah. Oh, that, that chick. Yeah, I don't know. See, some of these people, they get to throw in there. Emma Stone. Emma Stone's I know, so but Emma hot Stone, right now. Emma Stone kind of is more of a brunette in my brain. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Rihanna. Rihanna, he said. Go outside. I think that's a natural red. No, that's seriously. That's a natural Go red. Go take a walk around the studio. <laughs> Sit down, you fat ass. Yeah, Rihanna. And then... Uh, we're forgetting Natasha Leone. There's a redhead. Oh There's yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. her. Just saw her a couple, a couple nights ago. She's who's that? Julianne Moore. Yeah, Julianne Moore. I just saw her Old Navy commercial. I was like, huh, Natasha Leone, Old Navy. She's right. do, Old Navy. What do you mean? Old, oh, she, she do, does TV Old, old Navy commercials. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. I sound like my father now. I don't watch TV. Isn't this fucking? This is gonna be. So I watch, the only TV I watch is sports. Me That's too. When I see commercials. That's funny. Me yeah. too. But now, uh, there it is. Now I'm not even watching fucking sports live like I used to. Yeah, I was I'm just I'm like a, clipping sports now. Wow, doing a little old navy. Uh, right, it, it, I, mean, I ain't hating. Get your paycheck, but it does seem like a pivot. That's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. It is funny when when people that you wouldn't believe would go to a like do a brand uh, sponsorship thing where like because it, it was never your image prior. If it always was, it doesn't matter. Right, right, it right. Not, it, like if if it's Kevin Hart, no one's like. What's Kevin Hart doing reading it? Da, 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 da. You know, you're like, no, that's Kevin. I think all aging is is letting go of like petty resentments. Like when we were right. kids, we were just like, this fucker sold out. Yeah. And now you're just like, oh, they got a great paycheck for that. Yeah, like, they have to live them. and they probably have a family. They and have that's to pay their kids' for. college. Yeah. So sweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way to go. Do it. It is exactly. <laughs> Although there's, uh, it, it is, <clears throat> it, it, this is, goes back to that argument of how much is, what's the dollar amount that would make you read for something that you absolutely loathe? <sighs> have you ever done it? I'm sh it, it, I mean, I've done. I mean, dude, I'm we're, a, we're, we're a podcast. We're about to cut to a commercial right now. <laughs> this is a perfect opportunity. <laughs> In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, I want to tell you about Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Uh, Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Green Chef sent me their delicious, delicious meal kits. And I got to tell you, phenomenal. 
each week. You know, you can choose from 80 plus flavor packed options, including new calorie smart recipes and wellness bundles. If you're looking to save, uh, save yourself some time and to eat well, Green Chef is the best. Uh, every single customer of theirs gets a free session with a registered dietitian. Sign up and start your journey towards better health today. I'm very proud to work with someone like Green Chef that offers unique farm fresh ingredients, uh, figs, dates, artichokes, sustainably sourced seafood, and much, much more. Uh, stock up on tasty extras in Green Market, uh, your one-stop shop for high-quality, thoughtfully curated goods. Choose from 23-plus options, including grab-and-go breakfast, which I love because I'm always moving. Okay, if you're someone who's moving around and it's it's hard, sometimes it's hard to go to the store, get what you need. It's difficult. So uh, let Green Chef take care of it for you. Okay, it's much easier. And I like eating healthy lately because I'm trying to I'm trying to get back in shape and cut a couple lbs off in the new year. Uh, if you want to try it, you should go to greenchef.com slash 60 whiskey and use code 60 whiskey to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 whiskey. Use the code 60 whiskey to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one of a kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys, baby. Uh, behind uh, Rabbit Hole's award-winning spirits is story, their founder, Kaveh Zamani, and I've spoken about them and this uh, gentleman for quite a while now. Uh, he wanted to craft the world's finest spirits. That he did. He was uh, the fastest to ever get inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame. Cheers to that. That's pretty amazing. If you're looking for something truly original and uh, unique, this is the sauce. A lot of people say they're small batch. They're not small batch. These guys are pulling from under 15 barrels at a time. That is extremely rare. You don't get that often. Um, it is a, a great price point for a phenomenal, uh, delicious tasting bourbon that uh, has four different expressions. They've got the Cave Hill. That's a triple malt bourbon. They've got the High Gold High Rye double malt bourbon. Then they've got the Boxer Grail Sour Mash Rye. If you're a rye guy, and uh, lately I've been sip-sapping on this Derringer. This stuff is really good. It's finished in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. And yes, I said it right. Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Okay? This stuff is delicious. Uh, it's got dried fruit, a little bit of caramel. Um, it's, it's sweet but smooth. Soft like sweet berry wine, baby. Uh, it's delicious. You got to try yourself some of this. They got four. Try any one that you like. I guarantee you're going to love them for the price point. It's really, really quality stuff. Go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Use promo code rabbit for five bucks off your first order. Please drink responsibly and enjoy. Jump down the rabbit hole with me. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Squarespace. I've talked for a very long time about Squarespace, and that's because my first site was made on Squarespace. I currently am using Squarespace. Uh, they know what they're doing. Back in the day, back in my day, you used to have to make a site uh, kind of rogue using either someone you knew who had a friend that was a programmer uh, that knew C++ or someone uh, who could, you know, throw stuff together uh, as quick as they could, sloppily, but it was passable. And now with Squarespace, you don't have to do that. They have so many beautiful, beautiful assets for you to choose from. They have a fluid engine, next generation website design system from Squarespace. It's never been easier to unlock unbreakable creativity. Uh, design a site however you want. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine. Built, built in, ready to go. Uh, Squarespace is the place. They have an asset library, an online store if you're looking to sell custom merch. They have flexible website templates. You can use theirs. Go rogue. Do your own. A video collection. So many extensions. The email campaigns. So you can pump stuff out, whether you're selling stuff, uh, promoting something, or you're like me, I want to promote shows and I want to find out where the clicks are coming from. So I use their analytics tab to grow the insights of my business, to find out where you guys are. Uh, and it's a, it's a great way to know who your fans are or connect with the people that you're looking to produce something for or sell something to. And they've also got blogging tools. You want a vlogger blog? You have vlogger blogger? You can do both on Squarespace. Um, it's so malleable is the word. You can do whatever you want on there. And if you're looking to make a site for whatever reason, uh, go over to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, uh, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay? Squarespace.com. Check it out. All right, when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. Speaking of products that I actually love, yeah. boom. <laughs> no, you know what's so funny? is like almost all the products that I ever read ad for on our podcast, in our podcast world, we have to approve, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And 
almost all of them either let us have enough fun where I don't give a shit, or I actually like it. It's 50-50. That's the way to do There's it. There's the one, half of them I actually like, and half of them, um, I like the, I'm okay with the product, and they're like, have fun, and it's not a part of your world, but when they let us have fun, we wouldn't, we don't really say yes to anything that I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like what they are, like what they do, and I don't use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be like at least I kind of fuck with it a little bit where I'm like, that's not that big of a, I, that's okay. Like I like, I'm okay with it. It's not for me, but it's not a a moral quandary, you know? But I did like uh, my first commercial. Um, I did a Mike's Hard Lemonade commercial. I don't know how long ago it was. And uh, that was like the last time I, I did that and I was like I don't think I'll ever do this ever again it was like the most embarrassing that's funny I hated it dude I fucking hate it also because it was like it was weird and uh, you'll probably never find it on the internet I'm sure it's been he's looking scrubbed yeah he can always he can find stuff usually when we had our show those who can't at some point they came to us with opportunities early on early on before they knew what we were going to do with the show and it was Arby's and they're like we got the, Arby's wants to do something with you guys and me and Andrew were like we have the meat and Ben was just like not a fucking chance no yeah Ben's punk rock and he was like a fat guy back in the day uh. and he's super healthy now and he's like I'm not pushing shit on America and we're like really upset we're like it's Arby's it's funny who cares it's gross meat who gives yeah. a shit and Ben's like no and now I respect it but I remember at the time Andrew and I were kind of pissed we're just like well I get it if you stand for something but I also uh I fucking those curly fries are so good, dude. I used to go there in high school. It was the closest place you could walk to from my high school. Yeah. So when you didn't have a car, Arby's was full of mm, shitty so freshmen good. and sophomores. We stopped on the road a few times and got Arby's because Bobby, Bobby loves Arby. I mean, Bobby <laughs> fucking lives and dies for Arby's. Yeah. So if we see an Arby's, if I said, sometimes I'll be like, let's just go to a sandwich shop so I, we can have like a decent sandwich and at least like. That's as healthy as we can be on the road. Totally. Couldn't agree more with And you. this motherfucker is like, no way, dude. He'll whine until we pull over at an Arby's, and he wants beef and cheddars and the curly fries. I mean, he and he eats all this stuff and then wonder why he's in pain for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I toured around with Brody Stevens one t- for a month. Yes! And it was, me, it was the weirdest tour. I don't know if you need to cut the commercial. It was me and Howard Kramer and Brody Stevens. Yeah. And I'd never met Brody. And it was a month of us going around the U.S. It was like, remember Oddball? Oh, yeah. The Oddball comedy tours? This was some preliminary, the road to Oddball. I'll never forget Brody going, welcome to the road to Oddball. And they just decided <laughs> the three of us were the guys. Wait, it was you, Brody. And Howard Kramer. And Howard Kramer. And we would just go to comedy clubs and be like, the real Oddball's coming in four months. But <laughs> we're here doing a tour. It was a weird funnier or Die promo thing. And Brody would only eat brand chain shit. And he was also just relentless in a rental car the entire fucking time. So by the end of it, I was pretty sick of Brody, even though I love him to death. Yeah. But um, we pat we're in Texas, and we passed just like the most iconic roadside barbecue stall. You can see smokers out there. It's like, guys, you can smell how delicious this is. And Brody's like, nope. And we went to like a Dunkin' Donuts, and I was no. just like, dude, I'm done with this fucking eight tour. One eight till I <laughs> die. I'm done with this tour. He just didn't trust it. He needed everything to be comfortable. And something he had tried before and reliable. He and wanted he a corporate machine to back it up 100%. in the event that something happened. 100%. Ironically enough, Bobby shit the bed in, where were we in? <laughs> Jersey? One of the more recent ones. After he had Arby's. He, yeah. had, he literally had shit the bed. We had to switch hotels. <laughs> this is not, huh? No, it wasn't Philly. I want to say it was Jersey. Are you? You guys aren't rooming together. He's got his own room. No, he has to room with Carlos, one of our other producers on Bad Friends. We don't let these guys get their own room. That's insane. They yeah, don't yeah. deserve that. Okay, fair enough. And in fact, we asked, we called and had the airlines. We asked if there was a class lower than coach. We were like, <laughs> is there? Because these guys, you know, some of these guys have put in a little feelers if they could get up to Comfort Plus, maybe. Wow. And that's, out, you're out the of your balls. fucking head. No, no. Was it, you're just 24? Yeah, 24. No. Dude, so they've, no, no, yeah, yeah, a few of these guys have kicked around the idea if maybe they could get a little bit of an upgrade. And I got to tell you, <laughs> it's making me want to make them drive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, fuck you guys, dude. Because exactly. we had, the, what we did at 24, what, what we, like, dude, I remember... I've told these stories ad nauseum on the show, but like you probably, I did triple runs. I did all these yep. like fucking Montana, Utah. Yep. F- and I would Wyoming lose money. Wyoming was our thing. Yeah. yeah. And I'd Ugh. lose money every yeah. fucking time because they were like, we'll give you 80 bucks. And I would do the math and be like, I could get there on gas for $74. Yeah. Could that work? And uh-huh. it's like, no, of course it doesn't fucking work. You have to sleep in your fucking car. You don't have which, merch yet. I did. Yeah. There's no way to like make extra cash. <laughs> no. So, I, I remember losing money, and here these guys are traveling across the country with us, living like 
uh, fucking kings sucking on that sweet podcast teat. It's disgusting. They're pi- these little pigs, dude. They don't understand Eating it. This is the crumbs. internet. This is what the internet did. It made these kids uh, get more than they ever deserved. Couldn't agree more. That's how big your crumbs are, though. I know, big crumbs. Big crumbs. Big crumbs. This has been big crumbs with Santino. And that's what I said about crumbs, by the way. If you spill some of that muffin on that fu- in the studio, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Mm-hmm. These guys leave food everywhere like children. Who's the it. messiest person in your house? I mean, my fucking two-year-old, <laughs> but... Is he? Yeah, dude. Get him, fuck, get it together, dude. He's a wild child. Does he uh, throw shit everywhere and make... Like, does he draw on the walls? Is he that kind of guy? Kind of. He he very much just, like, he's Chris Farley. He just, like, takes his shirt off and is like, <laughs> what do you think? And we're like, it was funny one time. And he's like, cool, we'll check this shit. I just throw... Yeah, he's wild. The, the, the older one's a little more sedate, calm. Little man's a nut. The little one's a, l- a lunatic. Yeah, it's it's bad. The drawing on the walls thing and the breaking stuff. I always thought that's someone just told us that some their kid just drew all over their couch, and yeah. that was a big. It was a heavy day, I guess. I'm neurotic, dude. I'm I'm clean. I'm orderly. I have a nice house full of old antique stuff that I've acquired, and it's just like going to. And now shit. you had kids. Now you got. We had a white couch. What, what were we What were we doing? You have a white couch. We did with children. We did. Foolish. Gone. Did you have the couch prior to these children? We did. Okay, so then that's okay. That's that's fine. No, exactly. It's not like you it's had kids like, and then we're like, well, let's get a new couch. And no, dumb we enough to get stupid. a white couch. We just yeah. learned over the course of three years the white couch has got to go. Can't do it. Yeah. I don't think anybody. We have. I have like a little bit of a. It's like a off color, off white couch. Uh, no kids, but even us. I'm like, well, the dog is for sure gonna fuck this thing up. What's the difference? Uh, with kids? Yeah. No, is I'm it, saying what what. You, it. Why did we get a white couch? Is what you're asking? Yeah. Us? Well. Yeah. We moved into this house. It's got a basement, so there's like that's the that's the, the carpeted fuck basement. around area. Yeah. That's where the kids can play. That's the, where we have a shittier couch deliberately. The upstairs is a little bit more formal living room. We have a record player. When we lived a life that would allow for such luxuries, mm-hmm. now we were like, stay out of the living room. But it's covered in kids' toys, and even we don't even let them on that couch. But never leave. The little hands are always fucking dirty. So it's just a <laughs> layer of yeah. We had to get rid of it. Had to get rid of it. Have you thought about selling the kids? We've thought about. I've been telling a great joke. It's like we're done it too. We are done. Too. We're, we're actually thinking about adopting. It's like if anybody, if we can find a good home for the two year old. We're like downsizing <laughs> this thing. We two was a push, man. I didn't like. We we're like, do we? Do we not? It was during COVID, and we chose to have two. And he's two, and I still don't know if we made the right choice. Yeah, you he did. has not convinced me yet. No, he's going to turn I out love great. Him. I love him to death. Wait to see how successful he is at whatever he ends up doing. Yeah, and then it makes you feel like you. Um, that you are a wa- you were a waste of time. It's but the, at least you made room for something better. I l- I couldn't be happier with <laughs> yeah. him. But the first one was great, and the second one. Had we had him first, we would have never had a second one. Oh, no oh, one, oh, no right. If it was the other way around. Oh, other way around would be like that's we, why the universe gave you that one first. Though I think so. Yeah, to I trick so. you. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, and just two, to and fuck two boys you up. too. <laughs> yeah, but two boys seems seems great because uh, honestly, like uh, I have friends that have all girls. Uh, my agent has all girls, and he's, and he's like less it's of tough. a man than me. That's a you guy, you goddamn that. right. Because I provided two right. heirs, first right. first two tries. And what's your agent doing? Taking yeah. your ten percent, taking my money with his to his girls, scum, trash. <sighs> he does tell me all the time. He's like, it's really hard to live with a house like t- full of women. He's like, so when I do get out to go see a friend, I want to stay out for a little bit longer. Do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Oh, where yeah. like I- I'm ready to go home sometimes. Like if we go out to like a football game or something, or out to dinner. And he and I'm like, all right, I got a jet. And he's like, you don't, you want to hang for another minute? Yeah, it's so <laughs> like, sad. Just sad dads of America. You know, <laughs> any dog walk, I'm like, this is gonna. I'm like, I can drag this to an hour and a half. I can drag. That's like, a long if, dog yeah, walk. Yeah, I can, it's like, if I, I can just go walk the dog. I'll be back. I'll be back this afternoon. <laughs> That's your getaway, huh? Hundred percent. Where are you finding the most time to get work done with with the kids around? Do you have like a? Do you have to carve out a chunk? Or do you just do it when you do it? I made an office in the garage, oh. uh, so I go out. Dad goes out to work, but honestly, you know, I travel for stand up, so airplanes. I get shit done on airplanes. You do. There's See, no I'm, internet. That's so funny. I write. I write. I write. I do whatever. I'm so freakishly productive on airplanes. People must think I'm a lunatic spy, like landing and just <laughs> gotta get it done. Because I get on and just work my ass off and then get off. And you have like it. four laptops open, and everybody's like, "Is this guy, screens? What's maps? this guy up to?" Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, I'm the opposite. I cannot wait to sleep on planes because I feel like I'm never not doing stuff here. Yeah. Now. Like I'm so fucking busy where the moment I get on a plane, it's embarrassing. Sometimes I'll be falling asleep 
as I've sat down, and they have to wake you up to be like, sir, you have to. Yeah, yeah. I don't have that skill. I can't sleep on planes at all. Shit, dude. At all. And I'm I've been so on, good. We've all been on yeah. lengthy ass flights. Can't do it. It's really? Uh, really sucks. Oh, man. My favorite thing is to sleep a whole fucking flight. God if, bless uh, you. I wish I could do and it. And then you just to... wake up and you're there. Yeah, I do it I all the time. Ugh. I'm check. I'm like trying to waste time till I can check the map through the sky again to see where we are. And can I like, tell you the, my little trick? Sure. Do you like classical music? Yeah, of course. Okay. There's a couple of composers that I'm going to send you. Yeah. That put me to sleep. <laughs> Just lights out. At, dude, wi- within seconds. I'll put in my headphones. They're noise canceling, so you, it's really, you're not hearing shit but them. And I, I will just take deep, slow breaths, listen to these, these three composers that I like, and I'm cashed out, baby. I love that. And I'm good to go. So for some reason, it puts me in just like a... I'm sure it literally lowers my heart rate. Oh, absolutely. Because if I'm up doing work, or if I've got like things I need to do on the plane, and I start listening to like regular music, I'm up. It's going to keep me up. I'd be so funny. Just I get the list, and it's like Dave Matthews. <laughs> I Matchbox said composer, 20, dude. And I was like, yeah. what does Santino think classical music <laughs> is? No, it's, it does, it does it's, lower. It's just Smash Mouth. That's all it is. The whole, and you're like, wait, I thought you said it was multiple. It's like, well, it's different versions of Smash Mouth. It's a cover band doing Smash Mouth. I used to listen to cool music that I like cooking dinner, but now at the end of the day, I'm so burnt out from kids. It's classical music. Yeah. It's like the symphony channel on Sirius or whatever. Just let's lower everything down. I think down. it does. Let's calm it down. I think here. it does land your like internal plane a little bit. I so then when so. I'm up, up in the sky, it helps me pass out because I just don't. Also, if I if I'm up in the sky and I start um, letting my brain run too free, I get a, a anxiety. Oh, okay. Not about the plane. Sure. I just start getting anxiety about life, where I'm like, oh, I should be doing that, or why didn't I do that, or this should have been. I'll start spinning out about bullshit that has nothing to do with that. That's what I do every night before a plane flight. If I have to, a really oh, yeah. hard, important wake up time, like you got to get up at six fifteen so you can hit this flight, I'll spend two hours in bed thinking about the dumbest projects whatever I mean, shit yeah. that shouldn't be on your mind your, your brain is a monster it's, it's disgusting i can't wait till they find out what all this extra space was when they say you're only using a percentage of your mind my theory and i want your theory <laughs> sure i think the other chunk that is um uh, you know unusable or unused by us for now i think that w- i think it's um I think it has logged memories of your past lives that you've lived, oh, whoa. and it won't let you access those because otherwise the whole thing breaks. I think you're only given so many. You're given one, like one machine, and then you've lived a million lives, right? Mm-hmm. And this thing stores all that, and that's and interjects it as it chooses. Wow, and just like subconscious flashes through your dreams. Well, that's why you have strange dreams that kind of have weird ties or intuition. To me, is like when somebody has wildly good intuition. I have some friends that have like such remarkably astute intuition. I'm like, you're accessing a part of the thing. My wife is kind of witchy like that. She'll, yes. she'll have a little premonition type this things. This is good. Call like, your wife a witch. This is good. I she like would, this. She loves this. She <laughs> would take that title. She's at home right now while you're going like, bubble, bubble, toilet, travel. Dude, one time she was talking, we were walking and she starts, sees, she sees a dog that's like tied to a fence and she starts talking to the dog. And she'll always be like, what do you think this dog's name is? And I was just like, I don't know. The dog's name Leroy. And she goes, it's Griffin. I think it's Griffin. And then the owner came up and she's like, what's your dog's name? And it was Griffin. Shut the fuck I'm up. Not, I'm not kidding you. You got to kill her on sight. That's, that's <laughs> immediately like, sacrifice her. We, witch, 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 witch. He knows. <laughs> that's a, my parents, this is so stupid for a second, but we play a game. We... we <laughs> We play a game over the Called holidays. Sink the witch. Yeah, sink the witch. And we burn a woman in our backyard. Mm-hmm. No, we play um, screw your neighbor. Do you know fuck your neighbor? Do you know screw your neighbor, the card game? I don't think so. Oh, it's such a stupid, easy card game. But okay. basically, everybody gets one card. Um, you look at your card, and you're either allowed to keep it or pass to your left. You okay. can only go one way. And, that, you know, obviously, higher number wins, blah, blah, blah. And then when you get when you lose three times, you put money into the pot, and everyone sings sha na 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 hey hey goodbye but then some reason i think my dad someone divulge it when the song sha na na is over everyone goes hey 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 goodbye witch 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 <laughs> i don't know why we do I love it that. that's just good it's fun it's so fucking that's dumb. good fun but we chant witch as you have to take a shot of whatever disgusting alcohol that's been put up there it's so funny everyone tries to find like the grossest shot but it ends up being something that you wouldn't mind taking it was Fireball or That's something. That's not the grossest it, shot by a long but shot. But what, see, this is interesting. We've gone over this with my family. What would be the thing 
What would be the shot that you're like, man, everyone, no one wants to take that? I mean, something that makes you gag where you yeah, can feel malort. that spit come. Like, I, I used to drink Jim Beam, just a shot of Beam, and now I would puke if I had a shot of Beam. You'd yak off that, huh? Yeah, I think so. Well, okay. I think so. See, to me, it's like whiskey or uh, scotch or anything like that. Like, But you know when it's bad well shit and you're yeah, just like, Gah. Even still, I could yeah. knock it back. Like, I could do, like, oh, yeah, right, like one of these flavored, like a Honey Jack Daniels. Yeah, flavored whiskey pro- or flavored booze would probably get me before yeah. regular booze. You like Frenette? Like a no, Frenette. yeah, Frenette, same thing. Frenette's gross. We talked about that's like Chicago has a thing called Malort that oh, you I buy people Malort, a nasty sure. fucking yeah. shot of that. What is that one? Black cherry Windsor. Oh, yeah, Black Cherry that's Windsor. Canada, right. This is disgusting shit. Like this is Canadian, it's plastic bottle whiskey. And Gross. by the way, Black Cherry. This you, is just like I'm I'm 19. I'm in college, and we're like fucking pumped to have this. Right. The whole bottle, by the way, the whole a whole what is that? Is that a liter? Oh, it's a one seventy five for twenty dollars. Fifteen dollars. I know mean, that's that's it's almost like the government should step in and be like, "That's too cheap. Something's wrong. <laughs> we got to blind this? the poor somehow." <laughs> <laughs> you know, a better way of blinding the fucking poor. I knew I'm a, all ears. I knew a dude when I was my dad grew up in the South. He grew up in in North Carolina, and uh, my mom's from Virginia. Really, rural Virginia. Well, yeah, they're yeah, from yeah. the fucking. They're from the mountains. They're from a tiny little bullshit town, and mountain people all over. And there's. Um, vineyards in some of the mountains, like over the hill from them, and then so, uh, of course, next to these vineyards, there's always uh, moonshine distilleries. I mean, that's yeah, like sure. hand in hand in the sure. Appalachians. So there was a couple of people that would make their own shit, right? And uh, there was a guy that I, you know, I don't know how we family friend is the best way to say it, like neighborhood yokel or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But legitimately, I thought this was a fake story for years. Holler, he's a holler pal. He's a holler pal. Yeah, hey, holler at me. <laughs> Come on, come on, bow and send me down here. <laughs> he's he's semi blind from moonshine. No shit. Yeah, and I didn't know. You know the whole like it'll make you go blind. No, real actually yeah. will make you fucking go blind. Gut rot. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, but I believe it. I mean, have you ever had something that's moonshine? Like, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> repulsive though. It tastes. I mean, it tastes. Honestly, it's there is no pleasure derived from it. It's 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 so heavy and strong and awful. I mean. It does smell like the way that gasoline hits you, where it like kind of overwhelms you. Yeah, that's what it feels like when you drink moonshine. Dude, it's I, terrifically shit. One time, and I was in Mexico with some friends backpacking when I was like twenty four. We went around Mexico for two months. Cool, it was awesome. That's fun. And we were everywhere. It we went to this small little islet off of a, a strip of land. There was nothing. It was just like cabanas. We spent the night there. And we asked, like, where do we get the booze? And they're like, go this way, go into the backwoods, find this lady, knock on a door. <laughs> we fucking did it. We knock on the door. This woman's like, opens the door, and she has a bathtub. And she took a two-liter bottle of water, filled it up. You could smell the gas. That. And we're like, do you have any limes or anything? Like, we're going to need all the help we can get. She's like, pointed to her tree. We took them off her yeah. tree. And then she closed her thing, and we went back, and we are just like, Oh, yeah. Cigarettes? And she's like, Marlboro Reds. Here, here you go. And we went back to the beach and nearly blinded us. I mean, that hangover the next morning was Off. top. Ba- you got some bathtub booze, baby. If I wasn't 24, I would, you know, now I'd right. be dead. Well, but. you're prepped for prison at that point to take a little bit of bathtub gin. High dose of methanol certainly can, unless you really screw up a batch. You should not end up with methanol to do any damage. See, it doesn't make you go blind. High doses, it does. Yes, right. Yeah. Right, Meth- right, right. Methanol. Yeah, the high doses of methanol. Okay. And let me tell you something. Is methanol in meth? Uh, no. Uh, in meth is uh, uh, the same ingredient that's in um, those. They keep uh, what is it? It's behind behind the counter. Uh, oh yeah, it's like uh, like Adderall. Yeah, uh, yeah but, speed. No, but yeah, yeah. Because what's in? Uh, why, why can't I think? No, it's a, it's an allergy medication. Uh, why can't I think of the name of it? Uh, ep- uh, not epinephrine. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Fuck, I'm allergic to epinephrine. I can't have that. You know when you go to when you you know you go to the dentist and they give you uh, something to numb the pain. I can't have. Oh really? Epinephrine. Yeah, it fucks me up bad. Look up how to make meth allergy pill and it just. <laughs> how to make meth and it gave you the phone number to call to not make meth. That is amazing. Please don't make meth. You know the podcast has taken a turn when a computer is telling us not to make meth. Well, well the best part is, is I was gonna get we were gonna use like house computers and then I thought bring your own, but now his search engine is. I mean, this is like pure. The feds would 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 love the to get a hold of this everywhere. Yeah. This is how you get to the dark web. It's like I know they're saying don't make meth. However, there's a whole web where we say pseudofedrin. Yeah, pseudofedrin. Oh, right. I would. It's in pseudofed. Right. Pseudofedrin. Pseudo is what is part of the meth cooking, meth cooking world. Uh, I'm not going to say his name because it's a mutual friend comic, but this you know who he is. It's funny. Okay. I'll tell you on fair. Okay. But he had a, he said to me one time. I'll never forget. We were we were on the road. This is a long time ago. And, he would drink like four or five Diet Cokes 
minimum a day, maybe, maybe more. It, it, honestly, that was, I'm giving a low bar. And, uh, cause I'd have coffee in the morning. He'd probably have two diet Cokes for my one coffee. And one point I said something stupid, like, you know, dude, those things are so fucking bad for you. Like, I can't believe you, like, you're just like, that's like water to you. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> he like finished, finished taking a sip and he goes, you know what, man? I used to smoke meth, so I think this is not that big of a deal. <laughs> I was like, you know what, dude? Have another Diet Coke. Have a way. Yeah, I guess that's go true. For it, go if for it. If you got off of smoking meth, go ahead and have a couple more Diet Cokes. It's like alcoholics outside AA ripping a few heaters. Have at it. Fine. Dude. Have at Fine. it. Fine. At yeah. least you're not killing someone in your car going exactly. 150 on exactly. the freeway. Exactly. That's just, just you. That one's just for you. Yeah, that's on you. I yeah. get I get that, too. I get that, like, uh, you know, my dad is an addict, so I get that, like, all those guys, whenever I would go to those meetings as kids, you know, I would always see, like, cigarettes and coffee, cigarettes and coffee, cigarettes and coffee. Yeah. And, like, the old adage is, like, well, that's just you replacing an addiction with another addiction. It's like, yeah, man, but this one isn't killing other people. Very well put. Very yeah. well put. I'll kill – if you want to kill yourself, go 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 for it. Yeah, exactly. Don't kill other people. Yep. Like, if you're going to be the person that's smoking and all that stuff, like, I have zero judgment over that shit. It's it not my fucking business. It is truly refined alcoholism that only hurts the self. Alcoholism yes. tends to spin out in yes. every Almost direction. Almost always, yeah. yeah. It's pretty hard to be the alcoholic who just drinks at home safely and just blacks out and goes to bed. There's no quiet librarian suffering <laughs> through his alcoholism and no one knows. Although really. on TikTok... I mean, I guess there are a few, but... I've uh, seen a few people on TikTok now on these, like, hey, there's a famous girl on there It's like, hi, I'm Jenna, I'm an alcoholic, and she tells her journey. She talks about her entire journey. And there's some of these people that I've seen stitch with her and stuff that are like, I was a samurai yeah. of alcoholism. They were like, I would literally hide it so well. Yeah. And I would do everything to not impose it on society where they like took public transportation so they never drove. Um, always drank at home. Like always drank at home. So just keep it together and button down nine to five and then just sort of Well, that becomes another their their addictions are subcategorized, right? So now they're addicted to hiding it just as much as wow. they're addicted to the alcohol. Wow, wow. Which wow. is even more unfortunate. The brain has to go through so many levels to like hide it so that they don't feel bad about hurting others. They only want to hurt themselves. Or well, or okay with hurting themselves. I mean, that it's a it's a wild. But I watch these TikToks. I've been, you know, once you go down one fucking rabbit hole, I can't stop. Of course. And then I, you, are you sunk on TikTok or no? I'm proud of myself. Good I, f- you're not I, on it. I, I am, but I'm. I have someone who runs it for me. Ah. I, I've, I don't even know how to access it, and I'm not balling on it. But I'm doing fine. I've got yeah. people coming to shows off of it, but I've never looked at it. See, I, I barely post it. on it. Yeah. But I love to look at it. That's yeah. the sickness. Well, like, that's the thing. I don't like. I don't care about posting it. Um, we put up a clip sometimes on it when we can. Of like maybe once a month, if I get we get a good clip. But I just enjoy the fucking the, the and I'm I'm all the for doom that. scrolling. You know? Yeah, of course. I mean, I I've like I said, I'm sort of old school. I don't like yeah. a lot of digital shit. But also, when you become a dad, it's not a good look to be doing this and be like, oh, but I'm filming a video for my work. Well, your kid's right there, and now he yeah. wants your phone. So I, something about being a dad looking at a phone feels real shitty to me. Yeah, well, I see all the time now couples at dinner that everyone's on their phone. I know. Well, it, it's the kids and the mom and dad are all on their phone. It's and, kind of a wild game. And believe me, my kids are absolute fucking monsters at restaurants. <laughs> and I so badly want to give them tablets and just <laughs> dope them. Yeah. But I'm like, nope, just make them learn how to behave in public and be engaged and look around and observe shit. Yeah, because it's, so that's got to be a hard balance of when you get to let them do the thing and when you don't let them do the thing. Because when we were kids, there were no rules. And I'm not saying we turned out great. I watched so much television. I did too. Oh, but I don't like that old phrase like, we turned out fine. It's like, no, we didn't. No, we we're, fucking did it. Look at what we're doing right Everyone's now. Everyone's in therapy and we're all depressed and everyone's fucking off their rocker. So no, <laughs> we didn't turn out fine. Right, right. That right, old right. adage is nonsense of like, oh, you know, they used to let me walk home from school and we're good. It's like, yeah, dude, people got kidnapped and that was a part of culture. It's I like, saw my friends do so much fucked up shit yeah, walking home from yeah. school and engaged in it myself. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just you're trying to stave off the evil that's inevitably coming for them. They're yeah. gonna find it. But if I can, if I can keep it away for five, six formative years. Great. And then you're good. And then I'm, and then the, they have the iPad. Let it raise I, you. I heard a thing from Seinfeld on a... I don't know who he was talking to, but it really hit so hard in my chest. I don't even have kids, but it, it like shocked me as a kid of my parents. I, he said, you raise these people for 18 years. And he, I don't know where he heard this, and this could be nonsense, but who cares. Then after that 18th year, on average, you will see your kid 
for only one entire year after that. Oh, man. In the count of days. That's heartbreaking. Right, and it was yeah. heavy as fuck. Yeah. There's two ways to look at it. Uh, good for some people, like, fuck it. Or, uh, well, that just means those, that time has to be significantly more precious. Yeah, I agree. And it's always, that's the better mindset to be in, but it's hard to always be present totally. in that. I mean, I, I, you, you, you know, like, do you get to see your family a lot? I do. My parent, my sister lives a block away, and yeah. my parents live on the other side of that park we were talking so that's about. That's awesome. So I, I mean, but we, my sister and I both lived all over the place and chose to move home. And they'll still give us shit. My mom will be like, "So you're not coming over on Christmas Day till two? I want Christmas morning." And it's like, "Mom, I moved a, I moved a blocks away from you." Yeah. So you've you've won. In yeah. Terms I of live the life. thousands of miles yeah. away from my family, exactly. and I work as hard as I can to get back as much as I can. But it's really difficult. I will say, uh, a word to the wise of this young lad. Uh, you got you got to go break your back to see them as much as you can because it does get harder now that we're in our 40s which is fucking wild. I remember being that age starting comedy and thinking like I'll get home when I can get home. Yeah, yeah. Which also was a financial thing for me. I couldn't just fly back to Chicago. No, of course, of course. And uh I will say though in retrospect if there was an advice I could have given myself was I would have rather spend more money that I didn't have going home to see them than waiting for the opportunity to continue. You know what I mean? That's like, really nice of you, I wish I, I wish if I knew that then, yeah. I wish I could have done that more. You know, becoming a parent is very strange in that, like, you, you're a kid. You're only a kid until you have parents. Yeah. Or until you have kids yourself, and then yeah. you're a parent. But, like, I never thought of my parents as people. They're just mom and dad. Right. And then you have kids, and they just see you as dad, and they don't even know you have a whole origin story. I was I was fucking awesome, right? Like <laughs> I used to be fucking awesome, I to, man. I used to be fucking awesome. But then you're like, oh wait, my dad's got an origin story. So right. like, it's really I've talked to my dad a lot about parenting. It makes you respect the dad, and and I can only go from my male perspective. I'm sure it's the same way if you're a woman and you have kids. But like, you really think of your parents as more three dimensional people than just your fucking parents right. when you become one. That's the, like a surprise for me. Well, it's a big and it's a big lesson to learn in life because, like you said, this special that you have out right now is all about you know, kind of uh, removing yourself of importance from the world that you've created, where you think you're kind of the center of your own universe. And you are at some point in your life when you're young. And then as you get older and you meet someone you love, you become less of the center, right? They become the center, or yeah. it's a duality. When you get married, maybe she's more important than you, but not really because you don't feel it primally biologically. Sure. And like the kid is the first time where you're like, oh, full, oh I am 100% behind this I'm fucking person. fucking gone. I should get out of here. What I am know, I doing? I yeah. know. So it is, it is a mindset fuck. And it's kind of fun to turn 40, whatever, when I had my first one, and just... Or no, I turned 38 when I had my first one. Your brain shifts. Like I've been thinking one sure. way to 38 years, and then the brain shifted. And it's still the same you, but it is wild to have this completely new perspective. It's well, like the you, chemicals must have changed in your chem, brain for sure. You know, like something Talk about must that unlocked shift. portion of your brain. Right. Something. So, I think you were gained another a little. I think access so. Point. I leveled up a little bit. Right. Dude, I leveled up. And it's up. not. And it's not disparaging on anyone who doesn't have kids. They're probably using that shit for other things that I'm like neglecting. Yeah, vacation and fun, <laughs> <laughs> buying shit in real I want. life and kicking ass and fucking <laughs> being a bad boy in pushups yeah. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, Getting to the gym bright and early, dog. Fucking... No, yeah, you do. I do think it is you're accessing something. Uh, that's why it is kind of beautiful, and it's something that I, at some point, would like to have. But it, I do think, I do think you're given another gear. It's something else happens. I think so. It's the yeah. gear that makes me a lunatic on planes or something because it's like you got these hours. Do it. Do it. Because you're gonna provide for them if you do do that. Meanwhile, that the childless stuff. scumbag over here sleeping, just <sighs> sleeping away. Playing. You're you're just typing away. I, I'm fuck. I'm. Dead asleep at l listening Playing to Ludovico and Addy. Yeah. He calls a composer. <laughs> he calls him a composer. <laughs> he is, dude. He composed <laughs> a lot of that shit. Have you ever heard? This is funny. Uh, this is this. That's a good uh, a point because I had a radio. I was listening to like, God, maybe it was like. I, I don't know what band I initially clicked on Spotify and to go play their radio station. Yeah, sure. So it was like a song from our youth. Okay. Right? And then in the playlist of songs from our young days came up the band Collective Soul. Do oh, you, sure. You remember Collective Absolutely. Soul? Absolutely. And I kind of forgot about them until I heard this again. Yeah. And I remember then then I like had seen like the blue album with the soul mm -hmm. with the squeak. Yeah. Anyway, it led me down this rabbit hole a couple days ago to like listen to a ton of Collective Soul. And in the I middle, love, I, this is a rabbit hole that I love, dude. In the middle of listening to it, I had this strange. I was sitting at a red light, going, "Was this good music 
or bad music that I just was tricked into enjoying. Like, I couldn't figure it out. I was mm-hmm. like, was this good? Or are they shitty? Because some of it, I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool song. And then some of it, I was like, what in the fuck is he talking I'll give about? You, Collective Soul, I think, is a you know maybe four to five songs. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And then if you start digging into that, yeah, you're dude, like, it got dark what? and weird. <laughs> and you had to buy that CD. Oh, yeah. So you were digging into I it. I dug, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Something about it, I was like, did I like this or did I just not know any better at that age in my life? And I thought maybe this was fun to listen. I It's really strange because there's bands now that I look back and I look at some of the stuff I liked and I fucking hate them today. I'm like, that band is fucking terrible. I'm getting more set in my ways. Like my wife, and this is another thing that's gone, but my wife and I used to, you know, we were meeting each other. We'd get drunk and we'd be like YouTube videos, one for one for one. And it was always 90s MTV videos. That's totally. like we both grew up in the same era. And we would do that till dawn. And it's just like, oh shit. So we love going down 90s rabbit holes. Yeah. But now, I, now it's like about what's more obscure. If we have a night where it's like, you want to have a few drinks and fucking YouTube it up? And she's like, hell yeah. Well, I'm trying to really get her with the weirdest shit. So I'm going deeper and deeper. Oh, like, you go down. Like I never really liked Alice and Chains in real time. And now I'm like, they rip. Yeah. Uh, they absolutely fucking rip. The lyrics are great. I, love I didn't it. give them enough credit. I think I liked them a little bit when I was younger, yeah. but I don't think I loved them. Me neither. But now I'm just like, I think they're first tier grunge Hall of Fame. Like, absolutely. Wow, <laughs> like, I'm just like, dude. they're up there. So I'm appreciating the 90s even more. It's in funny. This old I, age. I, but, uh, I find, I'm finding. Lately, Retire me to a corner. I'm irrelevant. Yeah, like, you're I, got gone. No, I got nothing You're new. Out. I'm done. Yeah. You yeah. don't know. You don't know. Uh, uh, you don't know. Uh, you can't. You don't even know the example. You, well, you don't I just know saw her either. name this morning, which is pissing me off because I was like, "How do I?" Something not? with a dollar sign. The Coachella in it. lineup. Let's see. Bring up the new Coachella exactly. lineup. Exactly. I'm like, this fucking. Su-. That's how you're old. You don't know who the famous people are. I know. And you don't know who the musicians are well, at all. It, it actually makes me go to images because that'll just show you the 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 poster they just published on. Pre-sale starts January 19th, so we got to go get in line. That's how old so we are. So Lana Del Rey. Tyler I got to get the to the creator. mall. Oh, that's how I was thinking of Doja Cat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Blur. I know Tyler, the creator. No, no, you know a lot of these bands. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. you do. But Doja Cat, I don't know Doja Cat at all. Okay, but let's go like this. You don't know anything by J Balvin or Jen I- Jenny Aiko. Nope. You know, you know, and I don't know how to pronounce Krangbin, but you know who those guys I, I are do. because They're you like, live in Denver. Absolutely. And it's probably played in every single fucking store. <laughs> every Arteryx store or whatever the fuck that's. What is, how do you say that? Ar- Arteryx? Ar- Arteryx. Ar- yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fucking the worst. Denver Rory, Rory Scove will turn me on to Crang Ben or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. That, They're that, tra- great. that tracks. Okay, you don't know Karen uh, Leon. You don't know Karen Leon. The fuck I don't? Of course I don't. I, I know. I, 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 an, an, uh, zoom in. Anima? Anima? Oh, you on the first day? No, I'll go down to the bottom behind he's on, Doja he's Cat. On Doja Cat day. Fucking pay attention, dickhead. I know Little Yachty, I couldn't name a song. DJ, DJ Snake. Snake. Give me a fucking break. Ludmilla. Nope. The Rose. Nothing. AP Dillon. Renee Rapp. DJ Seinfeld. DJ Seinfeld. Oh, Seinfeld's playing. I know Taking Back Sunday. Yeah, but that's from our era. I know Hermanos Gutierrez. They're new. They Yeah, rule. they're new. Taking they're, Back they're Sunday. You know them. You know. Uh, you don't know. DJ Seinfeld's kind of the best name. I got to tell you. No, Barry Can't Swim is so good. <laughs> That sounds like a ska band. Yeah, a hundred percent. That does Barry, sound like a ska. Barry can can't swim. Can't swim. Yeah. A... <laughs> like Operation Ivy. Oh, like yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of those. Uh, go back to. There uh, was a ska band. It was the best name ever. It was a uh, Easy Big Fella. Easy Big Fella. <laughs> Great yeah, name. That's such a good name. Great name. Yeah. Look at this. Like the third. Okay. So it always goes. This is what I find. This uh, they do this often on comedy lineups too, which is something to 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 talk about that makes me mad. It's like Tyler is the headliner, right, right on the day two. Sure. But then Blur is Blur is kind of a throwback because that's our era. I so love they're Blur. they're doing a re up of like that's why No Doubt is also like co headlining. Sure. But then you go to like Ice Spice is number three, right? I'm sure Ice Spice really 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 famous. But then you go down a little bit to some of like the old school people that are in some of these lineups, and you go, is Ice Spice more famous than some of like? Than, or do I just know that person? Better? Or I've just heard the name more often. I know Aquabats so yeah. much more Aquabats than I know is old, Ice Spice. That's again another old school band. Old school ska band. But who's? Let's see who the last person on the list is. Come Are you us. happy or sad to be the dead last person on these lists? <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm just happy to be on the list. Yeah, although, is that cool that you made it? Although on a comedy fest, are you getting an ego? About font size? Absolutely not. Because you're, I mean, you'll be up there, but I don't, I, I absolutely don't care about any okay. of this. Like, right. I don't, you know what's so funny? The other night, we used to, at the comedy store for a long time, stop putting up um, names for a while. They were doing, uh, they would just put up um, Comedy 365 is what they used to say up there. And then they started putting names back up on the, on the main room side again. And um, 
someone said to me, a friend was coming to the show and was like, oh, the, you, they put you up second and said you're not on the top there, but you're bigger than whoever that was. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, I don't I don't think that matters. And they're like, that's not why they do it that way. I'm like, maybe they do. Maybe they, maybe they use, I don't know. I mean, unless it's a bigger font. I don't care even yeah, then. Yeah. Fucking what do I, I just don't get, I, I don't care. I either. don't give a fuck about that stuff. It's really, I don't know, like being included to me is pretty low on the totem pole of what I give a shit about. I have been called Adam Clayton Holland on Marquees numerous times. <laughs> and I so I'm just like, it's okay. Whatever, it's whatever, man. dude. Yeah, yeah, it's a more a common sounding name. I get it. It is what it is. It well, is what but it, it is. also, yeah, I do wonder if you're last on that list, you just made it, right? Zoom in. Who is that? Kiss Kim Kimonos. They have six hundred and seventy thousand monthly listeners on Spotify. That's really good. That's, really good. that's so, huge. and that's the thing. Also, here's another gripe. Sublime is on there. Is it his son, right? His son is now playing for, with them? I saw stuff online of his son playing his dad's songs. Now, I don't know if that was him doing just like a one-nighter thing, but Sublime surviving members are there, but are they not? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, the front man is Jacob Noel, so He's Bradley's son. Bradley's son, yeah. Got so it. he will be doing the Coachella, Coachella which I got to tell you, fucking not a Sublime fan, that's fucking rad. Not a Sublime fan Not a well. Sublime fan, but that's, but that's if you're going to do it, let your son do the homage. That's I get cool. It. I get it. I used to have a joke. I was like, my girlfriend named her car Bradley after the lead singer of the Sublime. I'm sorry, my ex girlfriend named her car Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I go down. I used to go down to San Diego and Orange County shows and talk about shit about Sublime just for fun. I didn't. Totally. Even, I don't even dislike them that much. I just love shitting on it. It, it is so they get holy so mad. in Southern California, oh, and you're not from here, neither am I. <laughs> and I was like, they're not that fucking great. So like, once you learn that you can just twist their screws. Oh, with people Sublime hate, out here. Dude, that I is, love doing it. I love doing it. And I would say I'd try to find the comparison for Denver. For for Chicago. Somebody is, is That is so Has weird. that ever happened? No. So I've have you ever heard that? I've never heard that. What is that? I've, I've probably Something outside. Yeah, construction dude, I think outside. A, I think a ghost took a shit. That's a ghost taking it has diarrhea. That's a ghost taking a shit. It's Holy so funny shit. that the listeners won't be able to pick that up on these mics, I doubt it. <laughs> but there is, it sounds like somebody is turning on and off a, a pipe outside. Uh, I wonder what it is for, for Denver, but for Chicago, by yeah, the way. Yeah, what is a sacred cow in Chicago? There's so many. Well, like, I'm not going to say, I'll, I'm just giving a broad, and I'm sure people online are like, that's the, maybe like Wilco. Oh man, I love Wilco. But maybe that would be like if people from Chicago would, even if you didn't like Wilco, you'd probably be like, fuck you. Wilco's great. Like, yeah. you still defend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if, you, if you're a Chicagoan, you'd probably be like, get the fuck out of here. They're great. What do you mean? I, I'm trying to think of who. Denver. Well, what does this say? No, but I would say, like, I'm. To, we're talking, like, hip, cool. In the world of, like, sublime being kind of, like. Zeitgeist. Big, Zeitgeist, popular, for right. sure. Yeah, Wilco kind of has that thing for Chicago. I wouldn't even say Smashing Pumpkins. I don't thought, associate them with Chicago. I wouldn't, even though they definitely are. Also, it says Earth, Wind, and Fire on that list, and I happen to know two members of that band went to my high school. Yeah, in Denver, Wind Colorado. is from Sh Denver. <laughs> Absolutely, I don't know. Earth what's might up be with from that. Chicago. <laughs> yeah, Wind and Fire, and they had to get rid of Rain. Yeah, that motherfucker. Well, he never showed it. He was fuck. He came and went so fast. He's very flighty. Uh, cheap trick. Yeah. See, none of these I would really say genuinely are, except for the band Chicago, which used to be called. Uh, Chicago. Sh Chicago Transit Authority and the CTA sued them. The city sued them. Do you really? Know yeah. No way. Well, dude, the city told them. The, the city told them daily, fucking daily. That's exactly right. Daily, you <laughs> fucking scumbag. I think he told. They told that the city had said that they no longer can use that because it's a cop. It's a copy written fucking whatever. But yeah, I would definitely say Wilco as far as like nerd, cool, hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the one. What is it out of Denver, do you think? Well, so Denver never really had many growing up, but lately there's been a big, big boom. Big one. You know, Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. Oh, love. Who dude. are my boys. That guy's the All shit. All of them. I know. That, you're friends with that guy? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Nathaniel He's so talented. Uh, the drummer, Pat and I, were, we bird watched together. We're burden buddies. Mm. Uh, dude, they were like, when I was coming of age in my 20s, so were they. Yeah. They were all in tons of, and so we're all the same bars. We're all, you know, Denver's small. I know all those dudes. They're wow. all fucking great. And so we've just watched. I was, I mean, a lot of people claim to be there, but there was a small music fest. They did their first show on a roof in somebody's backyard. And we're like, do you see Nathaniel's new thing? It fucking rips. Like, because he's had five bands before then. Yeah. And then we've just watched them take over the world. That's it's such a cool feeling to so watch that happen. All of Denver, especially people my age, old hipsters are like, the night sweats. What the fuck? It's Pat. That's and cool. And it's Luke and it's Nathaniel. It's like, it's so cool to see. So Tell me Nathaniel's the one that sings. Uh... 
And it's still all right. Oh yeah, totally. My I God, I think dude. that's the name of the album. And it's still all it's, right. It's still, still all right. right. Yeah, that song will make me cry in the car by myself, man. Not only that, they're so great. They bought a dive bar in this area of Denver where that festival is called yeah. Baker. It was going to be raised. They bought this old like rockabilly bar and they restored it. It's got a great sound. It fits maybe two hundred, and they'll just play shows there every once in a while, and you can go watch them. Oh, and, that's cool! Like the Nuggets coach is an investor in it. It's just really like the cool. Yeah, it's the so coolest do they bar. just play a show? They do pop up like a almost like secret shows where they before they're getting it. ready to go for on tour. But they announce it like day of type of shit. Yeah, yeah pretty that's much. And it's kind of like if you're friends with them, like you can get in. It should it should seat two hundred. There's probably three fifty in there of Fuck. Denver luminaries. See, in there. that's what I would love. It's to fucking do. great. I'd it's love to have fun. a little sneak, uh, a little those little sneak in shows where it's like friends of friends. I know that's like sometimes like a little annoying for regular fans because you're like you privileged fucker you get to go to the thing for me like, with that one i'm not ashamed of it because it's not a place of privilege like i'm some famous guy it's like no i just fucking spent you've known hours them. with these dudes my whole life just bitching yeah. about wishing denver could be bigger and have more right and they're doing it and it's so it's it rules that is fucking cool yeah, Those, yeah that guy so that they're that guy fucking rips they're the def the top uh, ones out of denver right now for I, sure i do want to i would love to see him i don't but yeah i don't know like that's the thing is i don't think we have that um, I would get people would get that mad if you talked if you talked shit about it. But Southern California has so many that it's weird that they've chosen Sublime. Like Red Hot Chili Peppers are fucking from here. Yeah, I know. And that, that's such a much larger band on the on the global scale of like his, history. But his, historically, they've made so many fucking albums. Like uh, they're an LA band. Oh yeah, I know they're California embodied. This brought made me think of another thing. There's this impulse when you go and headline anywhere. To be like, I'm in this town. This is your sacred thing. I'm gonna shit on that thing. Yeah. Do yeah. you have you ever had that burn blow up in your face? Because I have several times where it just exploded. Oh on yeah, me. are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, people get well. Also, I'm a, a diehard. I'm a sports fanatic. Oh, so, so you like, just go. You, you Bill Burham out the gates. I always make fun of their sports teams. Yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah, that's yeah. a part of the bit. And that that oftentimes, uh, I tell you what, the cities that have good history, um, they don't give a fuck. They laugh with you. Boston, it's impossible because they're a dynasty. They've had yeah, dynasties. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, there are cities you go to where it's just undeniable. They're like, okay, make fun of us. We're also fucking... We're confident in this. <laughs> we're pretty... We're okay, dude. You know what I mean? Like, we have we have so many fucking championships under our belt. Denver's teetering on the edge of confidence. So we're like, all right, just be careful. Right. <laughs> like, the, Nugs, the Nugs won. Just the Nuggets remember win, the Nugs won. And yeah. um, Elway's kind of off limits. We know he's got big teeth, but, like, let's not go further than that. <laughs> we're not prepared to go further than that. Yeah, you do have to... It, it is funny that the in between cities, like, um, well, I'll say like the I'll, the best example I could give you is Salt Lake. Whenever I play Salt Lake, I fucking love Salt Lake. I have like oh, I really guys. love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love that city. Every time we've played that city, I've had so much fun. I did the arena where the Jazz play with Bert. You know, we did like his tour. And oh, we, at John Stockton and Carl dude, Malone it was so, it intersection. Was, but every time I go to Salt Lake, it's fucking rad. Yeah. But I always remember when I do make jokes. Even if they are not uh, a part of the Mormon church, which a high majority of people are, yeah. but even if they're not, they're around it enough, they grew up near it perhaps, so they don't love it when you're diving on it. Like, right. they don't mind you teasing it, but they're kind of like, okay, man, I get it, just, you know. They've also heard it a lot. Yeah, they've heard it too much. They've heard it a lot. Uh, and so I, I, the last time I played, I maybe was a little too liberal with mocking it. And I think, like, they were like, okay, <laughs> we've... Well, that's well said. Cut it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. It, I think that was like I could feel them being like, "Go back to joke. You the jokes are fun. Just right. do the jokes and don't, don't shit on the machine." I also called out Carl Malone for oh, <laughs> knocking yeah. up a twelve year old or whatever the fuck it was, it's and they totally... liked it, but they were also uncomfortable about it. How old was he? She was like fourteen or some shit. I mean, yeah, it's like if they do that shit. Sorry, it's it's thirteen. It's... Yeah, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. Dude. So I had to make fun of how insane that is, and. They, you know, like people were a little, uh, didn't want to hear it. I remember an episode of NBA Inside Stuff with Ahmad Rashad. Love Ahmad Rashad. They were going around with Carl Malone and he had converted a semi truck into his like cribs. Mm -hmm. It was just like a weird, pimped out semi truck. And I knew something was off from that one. <laughs> from that yeah, episode, that was a I, knew dead giveaway. I knew something was off with that dude. <laughs> yeah, you know what's so funny? We need MTV Cribs to come back so we can find out who's an actual psycho. Like when or you pedophile. see someone's house, yeah, you see someone's house, you go, uh, this guy's actually more normal than I thought. Yeah, totally. And totally. then the opposite, where you're like, this guy's a fucking full blown lunatic. This guy's got a house and a truck. Yeah, he's a fucking scary weirdo. Uh, like 13th overall pick. Maybe that was deliberate, huh? 
And January 13th, 96, his contract with Jazz. This guy loves 13. Lucky number 13. Lucky number 13. I can't miss with this one, guys. <laughs> I'm on a roll. I'm Carl Malone, baby. <laughs> Carl Malone. Carl Malone loves the number 13. <laughs> Your Honor, in my defense. In my defense, number I was 13. 13 pick. That's just my thing. He's choosing to represent himself. It's like, Carl, this is the worst move. <laughs> yeah, his whole family's like, just get the lawyers. I like, Carl Malone going to do it. Carl Malone going to do it himself. Here's a drawing of me being drafted 13th. <laughs> a drawing, Carl? A drawing. Yeah, we need MTV Cribs to find out who's like it, it, like MTV Cribs for, for the young people that never got to really indulge in that as much as we did. Uh, uh, Redman, Redman's apartment in New Jersey. Oh, my God. That's like iconic. It was yeah. just like the great. There was a shoebox of money on the fridge. It was so real. It was just a fucking dirty how there's video games all over the floor. His cousin was just sleeping in the living room mid interview. And Screen people door. thought this was a bit, by the I way. I know, I know. And I have proof that it wasn't a bit. You wanna know how crazy specific Please. this is? Please. When I first moved to Los Angeles, um, I worked for a music company uh, doing visas, international right there, yeah. His condo, his two story condo in ah, Jersey. That's amazing. Yeah. So, Shelf of so, DVDs. So I worked for a company that did visas for uh, for bands, right? My first job, a desk job out here was I was doing international visas and all this stuff, and and Method Man, Red Man. I have a picture of me and and Red. I should actually, I'll send you to show in the episode. That rules. Somebody just sent it to me. Um, Method Man, Red Man, Flava Flav, uh, Macy Gray, uh, Cypress Hill. We worked. I worked just with a bunch of visas to travel international. Yeah, yeah so yeah. they could travel their tour. But anyway, uh, annoying story short. I um, remember when that episode came out, and I thought, I'm gonna. I'm, this is at the very brand, the new world of Google Map. And I was like, I want to see if that's actually his fucking address. Mm -hmm. So I searched on his submit, submittal paperwork, saw his address in Jersey, my hand to God, that exact same condo. Because if you go back out to the first frame, it shows the shot of the outside of his <laughs> condo. And so anyway, you, I did you like vouch, the, You can vouch for the No, and I did. And that was a, that right there. And it was actually a street view shot of that that con, the, that condo complex. And I was like, Holy fuck, that wasn't a... Because I remember Not thinking this was bullshit. Right. I was like, this is a fucking bit. His cousin's sleeping on the floor in the middle of the show. I mean, he kind of looks like shit. He looks hungover. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. was partying all fucking night. Absolutely. But no, this was this was all real. And granted, I don't know if he lived there anymore, but he owned this place, was still right. his one of his you know addresses. So it made me fall in love with him even more. I was like, oh, this is so legit. He This, is, this wasn't put on for the show. Meanwhile... Everyone else that did MTV Cribs wanted to make sure you oh, knew course, they had. Of course. I remember one with Devin Sawa, and it was. I don't like, know who that is. Devin Sawa was a. He's a teen actor and some stuff. He was in like teen movies in the '90s. You probably recognize him. Devin he was in Sawa. Stan, the Eminem Stan video. Oh, the kid who played. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes. That's I Devin that Sawa. Final yes, that's him. He had a little run of being like a teen star. Anyway, it's his cribs, and like just in the garage, he opens it up, and Jason Schwartzman's staying in there in a tent. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so that fun. Like, that's, that's fucking a, rad. That's a pretty good gag, you know. See, the, 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 when they started to get uh, self-aware that they had to make gags, there he is. There's Jason Schwartzman in his garage. I thought that was so fucking funny. Yeah, you had to make gags to make it worthwhile watching at some point, because otherwise they were yeah. boring. That's so funny. It was good. Yeah, Devin Sow, I remember this kid. Yeah, he was kind of like a heartthrob back then, right? He was like I can't a, remember uh, what teen movie, but he was a heartthrob for sure. Yeah, he's one of these young babes. He's a very young babe. He's a young babe, dude. Some there were so many young, hot male babes. That, wow, he's still a babe. This guy's handsome. He aged great. Isn't that funny? Click on the first picture, the first one there. Isn't it funny that these guys got better? Look how strong Devin Sawa's neck is. Well, he works out literally every day. Yeah. Fuck you, Devin Sawa. You sexy motherfucker. That's it. you're sexy, De Devin Sawa. Come, come at me. Come find me and come give me a hug and a kiss. Don't fight me, but just. Caress me a little bit. I'm doing a shameless plug, but I do a podcast called The Grolic Saves the World. And in that, just on our Patreon, you'll just like this because we have a podcast within the podcast called Boy Crazy, yeah. where we just appraise hunks <laughs> of <boys>. yesteryear. <laughs> and it's just three 40 something dads appraising hunks. We got to get you to guess you on bet, one. I you would love would, to. Would love Honestly, it. I'd love to. And Devin Sawa, if you're out there and you want to come on my show or you want to come on the hunk show, Boy Crazy. Boy Crazy, please, please do so. It's B O I. Don't get confused by the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, Adam, I love you. I appreciate you coming on the show. It's great to see you when I come back out to Denver. Um, we'll come po I'll come poke around with you. Yeah, man, I'd love that. Do me a favor, everyone at home. Please uh, go watch Wallpaper right now, available on the YouTube. So we'll put the link in the description below so you know where to go, so uh, you're not confused on where to click. And please share it and do all that stuff that the internet likes to do. Big, big... Uh, big fan of pushing that stuff around to everyone because if you like it i guarantee your friends will like it and that helps us grow 
uh, our own little thing independently as we did here on this fucking show. That's how all this shit started. So uh, I appreciate you and the show the same way. You look into that camera right there and you say one word or one phrase. It's going to end the episode whenever you're ready. One word or one phrase. Dope as fuck. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger.